Our top story this hour, New Delhi is hosting the Quad Foreign Ministers. India's External Affairs Minister is chairing this meet with the U.S. Secretary of State and the Foreign Ministers of Japan and Australia in attendance. The Quad, officially the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, it's a group of four countries, India, the United States, Australia and Japan. This grouping was a concept developed by late Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe as he sought unity among four democracies that have seen friction with China. Principles that uh, underlie the like everybody. Uh, the Indian Foreign Ministry stated that today's meeting is centered around recent developments in the Indo Pacific and regional issues of mutual interest. Analysts say the Quad's diplomacy has waxed and waned over the years. It's a loose grouping rather than a formal alliance. China, a country with growing territorial ambitions, has condemned the grouping as a move to encircle it. All four Quad members insist a free and open Indo-Pacific is essential. The Quad grouping has repeatedly emphasized that its goal is to maintain the liberal rules-based international order. China seeks to undermine this rules-based order with a revisionist challenge to the status quo. The Quad efforts are not focused on creating institutions or military alliances. The idea here is to generate gradual convergence of cooperation on issues such as climate change, critical and emerging technologies, counterterrorism, and cyber security. India has long had tensions with China, including a major border skirmish in 2020, and has a growing alliance with the United States. For the U.S. Secretary of State, the meeting comes on the heels of a flare-up in tensions with China. Last month, the U.S. shot down what it said was a Chinese surveillance balloon just off South Carolina after it spent days traveling across the country. Chinese jets have been intercepting the surveillance planes of Australia and other countries in the Indo-Pacific. With defense outposts on artificial islands, China claims almost all of the South China Sea. The South China Sea is a key gateway for a large chunk of the world's merchant shipping. The sea contains rich fishing grounds and reportedly reserves of undiscovered oil and gas. The South China Sea, therefore, it's a key economic and strategic subsection of the Indo-Pacific. For more on this, we're joined by Professor James D.J. Brown, an international affairs expert from Tokyo. Thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. Thank you very much. Now, what are you expecting from the Quad meet? What are some of the key areas of discussions? Well, I think the first thing to say is that these have now become regular meetings. That means that there's less of an obligation on each occasion to come up with some real kind of breakthroughs. Instead, uh, the participants have been presenting it as an ongoing conversation. I think that's exactly right. Uh, it's about uh, sharing ideas about uh, deepening cooperation. And there are two, of course, main concerns for, for the participants, uh, that of, of China and also of Russia. Uh, given that Russia is an area where there isn't so much agreement between all of the members, instead it's, it's China that will end up being more of the focus. Absolutely. In fact, China has condemned this grouping as a move to encircle it. How do you assess China's perception of the squad meet? Well, at least at the moment, that's simply not correct, that uh, were the, the Quad um, a, a military alliance, then perhaps you could understand that. But many of the participants have been very explicit in stating that it is not a military alliance and it is not intended to become that. Instead, it's uh, a grouping of, of states that have some shared concerns and they're, they're deepening their cooperation, but not moving towards becoming a military alliance. Right, absolutely. Also, as I'd mentioned earlier, U.S. Secretary of State, for him, this meeting comes on the heels of a flare-up in tensions with China with regards to the Chinese, suspected Chinese surveillance balloon that the United States shot down. How do you see this impacting discussions? Well, I think it will be an opportunity for the, for the U.S. To, to share its experience, to share its concerns. Uh, about those surveillance balloons. And this is, of course, something which affects not only the United States, but has been uh, noted uh, as a, a concern for other states as well. So I think in that area, uh, it will very much be a, an area of, of shared concern amongst the four participants. Right, absolutely. Also, coming back to a point that you made earlier, you said that the Quad is more of an ongoing discussion, but the point is to maintain the liberal rules-based international order. How do you see the Quad doing that? 
Yes, I think by uh, by resisting uh, threats to it, by resisting attempts to change the, the status quo uh, by force, which is why I state that the, the two main kind of concerns uh, on the horizon of both China and, and Russia, uh, with Russia quite clearly uh, presenting a, a, a military threat uh, to that order and to the basic principle of um, of sovereignty. And so uh, whilst, as I mentioned, that's perhaps a bit more of a difficult issue because India takes a different stance on the, on the Ukraine conflict, that's nonetheless going to be something that the other members will certainly want to mention. Right. Professor Brown, thank you so much for joining us with your insights on this. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about a fascinating topic. A phrase that's been floating around for so long, rules-based international order. Yeah, the U.S. loves to use these great terms, rules in order, but they never quite tell you what they mean. <laughs> it's like the mystery ingredient in your grandma's secret recipe. Everyone talks about it, but nobody knows what it is. <laughs> now, why is the U.S. so cryptic about these rules? Well, there are a few reasons. Firstly, they like to keep the rules vague because it's changing all the time, <laughs> just like a chameleon. You can't tell whether it's black or white because it changes colors to blend in with the environment, all in the name of protecting American <laughs> interests. Think about it. When the U.S. bombed the former Yugoslavia and invaded Iraq, they claimed human rights were more important than sovereignty. Yet, when it comes to Ukraine, sovereignty and territorial integrity are back on the menu. Just like a political buffet, <laughs> Peck and truce, whatever suits his appetite. <laughs> the second reason is, well, they can't really say it out loud, because the rules are like their skeletons in the closet. Will the U.S. tell you they blew up the Nord Stream pipeline? Or they listen in on their allies phone calls, like a nosy neighbor with a giant ear trumpet? These rules are designed to serve American interests first, and if they said that, it'll be like revealing the magician's trick. Nobody would buy it anyway. <laughs> Lastly, they don't dare to say it, because deep down, these rules are rooted in an us versus them mentality. They won't tell you the real reason they pressured countries to decouple from China is that they view developing countries as inferior and believe that white people should remain on top of the global hierarchy. It's like a never-ending game of the king of the hill. But the U.S. is always the one trying to push everyone else off the top, and China is becoming one of them. But here's the thing. This deep-rooted racism contradicts the very idea of political correctness that America claims to uphold. Uh -oh. So the U.S. wants this rules-based order to maintain their position at the center of it all, just like a spider <laughs> sitting in the middle of its web, using this phrase to confuse other countries, nibble away the rising powers, and rally its allies, or vassals, as Macron has correctly said. Uh -oh. As we've seen, America's rules-based international order is not all it's cracked up to be. It's all about me, myself, and I. In geopolitics, it's Western-centric thinking. You know, West, we're the rest. From a racial perspective, it's white supremacy. And philosophically, oh, it's the good old dualism. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. We deserve a world where everyone plays a fair game, and not just one where the puppet masters pull the strings. Good night.